Are you starting to get that feeling that it's time to raise your rates, but you're not quite sure where to start? Or you're worried you're going to scare away all those amazing potential clients? Don't worry, we're gonna talk it all through on Design Sips, right this way. We'll raise a glass while we think tank your business and make sure that we bring you more joy, more abundance, and more balance. I'm Sandra Funk, and this is Design Sips. Cheers. Cheers, Sandra. Let's do it. Okay. So designers submitted those questions, let's jump in. Camille says, I know it's time to raise my rates, but I'm worried about deterring potential clients. Would love your expert advice. Awesome, okay Camille, um, when you know that inner knowing is wisdom, right? It's your higher self telling you, nudge, you're working for too little, right? Um, and that, that concern, that worry, is that you know all of a sudden everyone's not gonna like you. Like, that you're not gonna be for everybody. And it's so important for you to realize that you're not supposed to be for everybody. You're supposed to be for your people that fit that same value proposition of what you're offering, right? So my husband always says to me, if you are signing all the potential clients that you meet with, then your rates are too low, right? Basic economics. You're not supposed to be signing everyone you meet with. You're only supposed to be signing those that can come to your fabulous level, right? So look at your metrics. Um, look back at all the potential clients you've met with and how many you've signed, and obviously you have that inner knowing. You know it's time to raise those rates. Um, there is something to be said for the fact that as an entrepreneur, especially one that's a service-based business with individual custom rates and you know, you go out and you pitch these clients, rejection is part of the gig, right? Plan for it, plan your reaction to it, prepare your face not to falter and fall apart when someone says, whoa, that's way more than I was thinking. Plan what you're going to say to that. Um, rejection has to be in the plan for you to know that you're actually charging the appropriate amount for your marketplace and for yourself, right? For your abundance. Okay, we're gonna dig in on a couple of those details, but for right now, you've got this. Definitely follow your gut. Yes, and if you continue to fill your pipeline and lower your rates because of those no's, you're gonna end up working in a job you don't love. Yes, and, and obviously as well, um, there is nothing worse than an underappreciated entrepreneur. Like if you're feeling like you're being taken advantage of or underappreciated or not valued to the level that you bring, if you're constantly telling yourself like, they have no idea how much I put into this, then you're charging too little. And also that resentment isn't good for your soul, it's not good for your client relationship, it's, it's not good for your referrals, it's not good for your mental health, for the sleep you get at night, nothing. So if you're walking around with a chip on your shoulder because no one appreciates you enough, AKA pays you enough, this is your great big poster board reminder that you are the one who determines how much you get paid. Mm. Right? Yeah. You're an entrepreneur, so you determine how much money you make. It's up to you to decide. And then, if you don't get hired, that's fine, but you're not gonna walk around feeling underappreciated anymore because you've set an appropriate fee to feel in good flow to do that work, to do that project. So the next time you're feeling that way, just remember, you're the one in control. Absolutely, and going off of that, we hear, oh, I've been in business now for five years, it's time to raise my rates. Yes. Do you think there is a perfect time to raise rates? I don't think there's a perfect time. I think there's, I, again, I think it's an intuition. I think it's a gut feeling. I think if you're feeling any of that resentment or any of that underappreciation, um, and also, obviously, run the numbers. Are you profitable? Are you making enough? If you're getting to the point in your career where you're like, I need help, I need an assistant, I need office space, I need a library, I need to start traveling to markets to get better vendors, right? there might be some real actual leveling up going inside of your business going on inside of your business that requires a rate increase right and we're going to talk about that more um, but you just you don't want to just raise your rates because you want to raise your rates and provide more value or you know have a better process have a better um, better vendors right um, 
you absolutely get to raise your rates whenever you feel you need to, but it is nice to bring some, um, like some improvements with it when it comes, just from a talking point. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, and going off of that, there might be a time where you're raising your rates and you're in the middle of three projects. What is the yeah. best way to transition uh, existing clients onto this new way of working? Yep, sure. Okay, so let's say you've got three projects going on, it's time to raise your rates, right? You are going to, you're under contract with those three clients. You're going to finish out those projects at whatever rate you're under contract with, right? You're gonna leave them where they are, finish those projects up. Then, if, tho if those clients add scope or wanna do another project with you, you're going to put them through the rate increase kind of protocol, right? You're gonna let them know, I've been paying attention, I've been listening to my clients, I'm making improvements on my business, I am, you know, I'm making improvement X, Y, and Z, and my rates are going up commiserate with that, that new experience, that new level, that new way of doing things, right? So you're going to, and you want to probably let those clients know when you raise your rates that you've raised your rates, even though it doesn't apply to them until they come to the end of their project. This is also a really important reason why your contract should have stated scope so that the project just doesn't, can't just go on forever, right? Um, it has to be a scope, when scope is added, you get to go in at the new rate. Um, I think that answered it. Yeah, definitely. Great, I won't ramble. I'll drink wine and think about what I've done. <laughs> yes, and this is your reminder to hit subscribe uh, so you can get those fun rants when she does do that. <laughs> Soapboxes often. Yes. Okay, so for those thinking, oh gosh, I have no idea what to raise my rates to, what, my, what to raise my rates to, I have no idea what to charge. Um, when people say charge what you're worth, what are your thoughts on that? So I am the consummate student, right? I'm always taking a course, going to a conference, reading a book, working with my coach, all the things. And I, over the years, because of all the love of learning, have heard the words charge what you're worth like a billion times, right? And my question back was always, well, how do I know what I'm worth, right? It's like why artists put their art in galleries for the marketing, but also because the gallery will price the painting. And it's so hard for an artist to paint to price their own painting, right? Is it the cost of the canvas and the paints and the and the brushes that went into it? Is it the time that went into it? Like, how is art priced? Well, similar to interior design, it's no none of your business how the art is priced, right? One piece of art could have taken this much in supplies, this much in time, this much in blah 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 but it's art, it comes from talent, it comes from the eye of the beholder. And I would argue that design is the exact same way. That it's more than the combination of the time, effort, and materials that went into it, and therefore it's really, you know, really have to, it's, it's an art form to pricing it, as well as an art form to creating design. Um, and so this is the one of the biggest things that I teach inside the standard. It's our program for interior designers to improve their businesses. And it's really our pricing model is so, so the thing that everyone needs the most, right? So it starts from, it starts from the financials, where you are, where you want to go, what is your overhead, what are your costs, right? We're all different. It can't be one size fits all for pricing because we all have different overhead goals, costs, regions, buying power, all of it. So we really get the financials broken down. The bottom line is we want to make sure that you're profitable, right? That you are that you're not just profitable, like not one dollar of profit, but that you are setting profit goals and that you are attaining them. And then we also wanna make sure that you're commiserate with that level in your industry, in your um, market, where you are signing clients, but not signing every single client, but not getting turned down by 90% of the clients either. And then that's, so there's some market acceptability going on there. And a big part of that is how you speak about your experience, having your business locked down, having systems and processes, having wonderful portfolio images to go back to, having a wonderful repertoire of past clients to give as referrals so that make sure that those new potential clients coming in can speak to a couple of your past clients who are obviously raving fans. Um, and the big, big whales, I love to take them to a past client's home, walk them through. like take them to the level that they deserve and, and really wowing them and um, selling that job. So without further ado, um, 
charge what you're worth, we actually get down to the details. We actually break it down inside the standard, which is amazing. But it's like too much, it's like spreadsheets and conversations and mindset and more spreadsheets. So um, too much for a Design Sips episode since, you know, we have to also drink wine. Yes, more important things. <laughs> more important things to do. But yeah, check it out. It's, um, it's pretty intense and it's also... We hear day in and day out from designers that they are kicking themselves that they didn't do the standard sooner because they are finally charging appropriate fees and they can't believe how much money they gave away over the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a designer reach out. Uh, well, she commented in one of our videos and this is what she said. I think it's worth diving into. Okay. I just raised my rates after realizing I've been underpricing myself out of insecurity that I was that was not based on reality. Okay, underpricing based on insecurity. Um, low self-esteem is so expensive. Ain't that the truth? It feels so much better to be paid a reasonable and real rate based on demand, and I'm work enjoying my work so much more. I actually feel like I'm producing better work. And that's the truth of it, right? Mm -hmm. When we charge a rate that we feel in our gut is appropriate, that is market appropriate, right? We're not signing everyone, but we're not signing no one and fits our profitability goals and maintains our overhead, maintains our teams, we are all of a sudden in flow with our numbers. And when we're in flow with money, money flows to us. I see it day in and day out, right? These, we have over 700 designers inside the standard and we hear from them all the time. All of a sudden, I'm getting the best potential clients. I'm, I'm landing those jobs with my new rates I am making more money than I ever dreamed of. I mean, it is happening all the time. When we get into flow with money, money flows to us. Can we say cheers to that? Cheers. Yes, we can. Such a good one. Love it. All right, guys. Well, the next part of this process, you know, you got your rates, is making sure you're betting and only working with dream clients. So check out that video. Yeah, we have an amazing resource for only working with dream clients and it is so important to your success as well because we just don't want to waste our energy outside of our ultimate goals, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Awesome. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers to you.